You even took that in Pedas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we often get the question, you know, why is our speakers forum in Pedans? Uh, and, and to answer that, uh, we kind of start, we need to start out by explaining what is impedance. The short story on impedance is, as an end user, you actually don't need to worry about it. With, with typical loudspeakers and modern amplifiers, you don't need to worry about the impedance. The, the impedance will be fine. If you're interested anyway, uh, now I'm going to go through a lot of information about impedance and, and how that relates to uh, the relationship between the loudspeaker and, and the amplifier. So, first of all, you can think of impedance as resistance. Uh, so it's the resistance of the electron flow. Uh, so when we're trying to drive the loudspeaker, we're driving an electric current into the speaker. The impedance of the, the speaker results in how much current are we actually driving uh, through the amplifier. More impedance, more resistance means that less current is being drawn through the amplifier and the loudspeaker won't play as loud. Low impedance, low resistance, now you're playing louder. On the other hand, you're getting closer to a short circuit of the amplifier, so you don't want it to be too, uh, too low. That sounds dangerous, but it really isn't in, uh, in normal loudspeakers. Uh, that, that's why we design the loudspeakers the way we do. First of all, you need to understand that uh, the impedance varies with frequency. So whenever you see a specification sheet, you always see one number but the actual impedance varies with frequency. If you look at a curve of impedance, you'll see the impedance go up and down depending on, on frequency. And that's actually important. So the reason this is important is that the load on the amplifier, how hard we're driving the amplifier, depends on the minimum impedance. And some people think it depends on the average impedance, but it's actually what is the minimum impedance. And just to get really nerdy about this, I'm going to quote uh, the actual standards on this. How do we specify what is the minimum impedance? There's a standard called IEC 6268-5, uh, which uh, says the lowest value of the modulus of the impedance in the rated frequency range shall be no less than 80% of the rated impedance. So let's translate that into to everyday words. What it basically means is the impedance can never dip lower than 20% uh, below the rated impedance. So if we rate the loudspeaker at 8 ohms, the impedance can never be less than 6.4, which is 80% of 8 ohms. If we rate it at 6 ohms, the minimum impedance can be 4.8. So that's really how we determine what is the nominal impedance or the rated impedance of uh, the loudspeaker, and that is what we put in the specification sheet. And at Donaudio, we of course follow these official guidelines. Uh, so you can count on that number you see on our website. Based on that, you can, you can tell what is the minimum impedance going to be. I have an example uh, of a Donaudio loudspeaker that we measured, where you can see the curves of the impedance in various frequency, and the lowest point of that is 5.01 ohms, which means this particular loudspeaker, we will rate that as a 6 ohm loudspeaker. Uh, because then we are following that guideline. One of the reasons this is important is that uh, when you look on the back of uh, amplifiers, in a lot of amplifiers you will see range specified. So what is the speaker impedance this amplifier is designed for? Very often the amplifier manufacturers will be very cautious about how they specify these um, uh, impedances. They might say on the back of the amplifier that this amplifier should be used with loudspeakers of 6 ohm or higher or even 8 ohms or higher. And this basically relates to how safety tests are being done on amplifiers. Because this is actually a worst case scenario. Uh, in a worst case scenario, what should the minimum impedance be? But playing music is not a worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is running a test with pink noise or test signals or something like this. So what happens is that to get the amplifier approved, um, they will run a worst case test scenario and make sure that the amplifier doesn't shut off. And the lower the impedance is, uh, the, the more risk th there is that the amplifier will shut down. So if you put on the back of the amplifier, this amplifier is for 8 ohms and above, you only have to do the safety test at 8 ohms. Then you don't need to run the safety test at 4 ohms, uh, where the amplifier might shut off. So that's really the reason why they are under-specifying the amplifiers, actually. In some amplifiers, you will find an impedance switch on the back of uh, the amplifier. Uh, and it might say high or low, or it might have a 4 ohm or 8 ohm setting or something similar to this. And an important thing to note here is that, that it might be counterintuitive, but you should always set that switch to high. Even if you have speakers with a low impedance, the switch needs to be set to high. 
And why is that? That's because this setting is only there for making sure the amplifier will pass the safety regulation tests. And these safety tests are done in worst case scenarios. Uh, so um, if you are driving uh, the amplifier uh, with a low impedance, the amplifier will get hot. And to make sure that uh, it can actually pass these tests, you know, it, it, a safety switch inside the amplifier will shut off uh, if, if it gets too hot. But when you're playing actual music, you will not reach that same level of, of uh, temperatures inside the, uh, the amplifier. Basically, if you set the switch to low, it will limit the amplifier so that you will actually have less power going into the speakers if you have low impedance loudspeakers uh, and you set the switch to low which is kind of the opposite of what you want. So if you have a low impedance loudspeaker, you want the amplifier to be able to drive it with a higher power. Always set the impedance switch to high. Due to this uh, issue with amplifier manufacturers being safe in the, the specification of the amplifiers, a lot of speaker manufacturers have become a little bit afraid of showing the actual impedance of loudspeakers. So in a lot of speakers, you will see misleading information on what is the actual impedance of the loudspeaker, because most speakers today is actually 4 ohm or thereabouts, sometimes 6. I've taken a look at uh, some of the specifications that uh, various manufacturers are, are using for their loudspeakers. I've removed the names, that's not important, just to give you an idea of what is, what is the world you're looking at when you're looking at specifications on these sheets. So the first loudspeaker I'm looking at here, it says nominal impedance 8 ohm, and then parenthesis minimum 3.0. That doesn't make sense. Like I just described, uh, you know, if the minimum impedance is 3 ohms, it cannot have a nominal impedance of 8 ohms. Then the nominal impedance is actually 4 ohms. So this should be rated as a 4 ohm loudspeaker. So the next example, nominal impedance 8 ohms, minimum impedance 4.6. So same situation again, this is actually rated 4 ohms. The next example, 8 ohms, minimum impedance 3.7. Again, these are different manufacturers, but the same issue is going on. The next one, minimum impedance uh, 3.9, it even says at 250 hertz, fine. But then next to it, it says nominal impedance 8 ohms. But this is a 4 ohm loudspeaker, just like most loudspeakers. There's an example of impedance saying 8 ohms, and they don't say anything about minimum. If you look at third party measurements of the same loudspeaker, you can see it's very clearly below 4 ohms even though the specification sheet says 8 ohms. There's an example that says compatible with 8 ohms, which is very clearly a dig at this way the, the amplifier manufacturer's specifications are done, uh, because the, again, third-party measurements show that this is below 4 ohm uh, in, in the actual impedance. We have an example that says impedance 4 to 8 ohms, uh, which might actually be true, since we just you know, mentioned that it's actually variable with frequency. Uh, but they don't say anything more than this. But you can be quite sure that the minimum impedance when you say something like this is going to be 4 ohm. So the conclusion is when you're looking at loudspeakers across the board in the market, uh, today modern loudspeakers, almost all of them are using 4 ohm impedance because that's the way you get the best use out of amplifiers. Any modern amplifier will give the most output power when you're running it at 4 ohms as opposed to 8 ohms. So that's why the loudspeakers are being built this way. But as we explained earlier, even though this is the case, you shouldn't run home and set your amplifier to the low setting. You need to make sure that the amplifier is set to high, even though most loudspeakers are actually for them. That was basically the impedance presentation. Wow. But I think it's important because this switch, this switch might actually take a 100 watt amplifier and make it into a 20 watt amplifier. Why even specify what the impedance is if in the real world it doesn't really matter? For tube amplifiers, all of this is different. So, so on the tube amplifier, you'll typically have uh, either different connections or a setting between 4 and 8 ohms. On tube amplifiers, this is really important to get right. But before you set that, uh, you really have to make sure that you have the correct information on what is the actual impedance of the loudspeaker.